ओम ज्ञान तिमृंद जानाजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मल तस्म श्रीगुरव नम वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतपदकमल श्रीगुरू वैष्णवाश्चीप सागर जात सह गण रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साध्वत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्णचैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरे प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्णा प्रेम प्रदायन कृष्णाय कृष्णा चैतन्य नाम्ने गौर विषे नम पंच तत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावता भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअत गदाधर श्रीवासुरी गौरभक्त हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्माद से यदितरत चार्थ सुभिजस्वराट तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदिकव मुह्यूर तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनिमय यसर्गो मृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्तकुहक सत्यम परम धीम नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर स्वस्ति अस्तु विश्व खल प्रसीदता ध्यान तो भूता शिव मिथो धिया मन भद्रम भजता दधोक्ष आविष्यता नो मतिरप्यहेतुकी रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवत कैंटो टेन चैप्टर सिक्सटीन वर्स नंबर सिक्सटी टू सो दिस इज द चैप्टर of krishna subduing kaliya snake so we read how he controlled him chastised him and the prayers of nagapatni the wives of kaliya and finally kaliya himself prayed to krishna and asked him that he can order him what he should do and he will follow that He was surrendered to him, and then Kaliya spoke to him that you know, it is his nature. He is born in tamas, therefore it is expected. It's difficult to transcend one's nature, 
and ultimately nature is given by Krishna. So it's up to him now what he can do. So Krishna asked him to leave this place along with his relatives, family members, wives and go to the ocean. So this pastime is significant in the sense that Krishna he purified the impurity of Yamuna and the Kaliyahada. So every system functions on certain principles, whether it is physical system, biological system, managerial system. There are certain principles which are necessary for it to function coherently, properly to achieve its goal, to deliver its purpose. And if something foreign, external enters into it, then it has to be contracted. Either it has to be fixed, that foreign object has to be adjusted to the system, or it has to be thrown out. So just as we have our own physical body, it is a system. It's a very well managed system, and it functions on certain principles, certain things go in it, certain things come out of it. But if something foreign, which is not salubrious, not wholesome to the system, goes into it, then system fights to manage it, to digest it, or it has to be thrown out of the system. If these two things does not happen, then that's what we call a disease. Then problems come, pain comes in the body, some other disturbance comes. And unless you get it out or you digest it, that problem will continue. So same in the society also. Vrindavan is also a system, it's also a society and it functions on the principle of prema, on the principle of love. And if something which is not conducive to that, then that causes disturbance in the system. And then Krishna has to take care of it, because this is his place and he does not want any disturbance here. So that's what he did because Kaliya was not fitting in the atmosphere of this place. He was not favorable to devotion, he was not favorable to devotees, he was not favorable to anybody. So that's what is called toxin or toxic. And your body can have toxins in it by eating or by ingesting something unwholesome. So that's has to be taken care of. So same also goes with any culture. We have Vedic culture, then foreign people came here and either they have to be adjusted to this or they caused problem to this, so they destroyed it. So if it is not adjusted, if it is not digested, if it is not taken care of, then it will eat up the system. Like body can become sick, there can be cancerous cells and then body will come to its end, it will meet death. So this is what Krishna is showing, that if there is any system then we have to have certain principles, we have to know the purpose of that system and we have to make sure that the disturbing agents do not enter or if they enter then they have to be adjusted or contracted or have to be thrown out. So whether it is our personal life, personal sadhana, personal practice, therefore we have do's and do nots, yama and niyama. So yama means things which are favorable and then what we call as aparad we were talking about means that is not favorable. It's not that it's displeasing to Krishna or anything. He, Krishna fought with Kali, here also it was not that he was like just angry, upset. Even if he was there, it was also pleasure for him to do that. He is doing this for the sake of his devotees and he relishes that. 
but it is harmful for the devotee to engage in those activities which are not favorable to devotion so that's why they are called aparadha because they are an obstacle to your aradhana or they are obstacle to your goal the ultimate purpose which you are trying to achieve so then we have to be careful about that because that is just like poison so we have to root that out better to avoid it so prakshalanasya prakshalanam padasya duradas prasnam varam instead of putting your foot in the mud and then trying to wash it better don't put it in mud so best is to avoid such activities such association so that you don't have problem on your path so that is the teaching which he is giving so therefore he roots out the problem he sends him out because snake himself said that swabhavo duratikrama that it is very difficult to change the nature so if you cannot change then go out of here although he did change even after changing him he did not keep him here because even his appearance is fearful not healthy because after this he was not same as he was before he got chastised by krishna so we have to learn that in our personal life if we have an organization we also have to do that otherwise corruption comes and then the very purpose for which organization is built it gets deviated it gets lost the purpose is not achieved so that's why we have to guard against it and that is possible if we are aware of it and if we are devoted to krishna ultimately we have to take shelter of krishna and if we deviate from that then problems come that's guaranteed so now krishna in this verse 62 he is also giving a blessing what happened to me cannot hear so yo asmin snatva madakride deva dinstap tarpayat jalai uposya mam smaran narchet sarva pape hi pramuchyate so he proclaimed that anyone who after taking bath in this place where he played with kaliya and then makes an arpana offering of water to the devas and fasts and remembers krishna then he will become free from all sins so sarva papai pramuchyat so many times you see these types of falashruti this is called falashruti or description of benefit of some hearing reading or doing certain activity so these are generally done to increase the interest of people so that these things are also preserved because people in general are sakam they have material desires material wishes so then they will also take to it otherwise devotees don't need this there's a word here offering tarpan what what is it what does it mean what is tarpan tarpan means like tarpayami but what does it mean offering i offer to you for your pleasure ah to, to like <coughs> it simply means offering offering yeah. mm-hmm. for his pleasure yeah so itopi hetos tvaya nirgantavyam evaityah yo asminniti so 
Krishna Chakrati says that this is also one of the reason why the snake should leave this place. Because if he stays there, who is going to go there to do the tarpana? If somebody knows there is a snake here, if there is forest and you know that there is a lion roaming in the forest, then will you go there to that forest? No, you will avoid it. If there is a lake and you know that it is infested with snakes because Kali was not the only one, there are so many of them. So then you will not go there. So if you will not go there, then how will you do the tarpan? How will you do the offering and taking dip inside the lake? So nobody will do that. So he says this is also the reason that he asked him to leave and go elsewhere. So tanna sambhavati iti bhav. So the meaning is that if Kaliya stays in that place, then this will not be possible because no pilgrims will come there. So better go. So where he should go exactly because earlier he said go to the ocean, so any specific place, so that is described here. It says Dvipam Ramana Kam Hitva Radham etam upashritaha yadbhayat sa supurnastvam nadhyan matpadalanchitam. So, Krishna is telling Kaliya where to go after leaving this place. He says that he should go to Ramanak Dvipa some island in ocean somewhere which is called Ramanaka. So it says Radham etam upashritaha dvipam ramanakam so you take shelter of the Ramanaka dvipa. So there he left. Why did he leave? Because he was fearful of Suparna or Garuda. Out of fear of Garuda, he came here. So he says, Yad bhayat sa sparna stvam nadyat mat padalanchita. He says, you came here because of Garuda's fear. He says, because of Garuda's fear, you left that dvipa, you came here and took shelter of this lake. You should go back there now. He says, but the same problem will come back if I go there. So he says, Nadyan Matpada Lanchitam. That no, now he will not eat you. Means he will not <laughs> trouble you. Because now I have stamped your heads with my feet. So he has got the natural tilak <laughs> on his head. Even if he goes inside the water, the tilak will not be wiped out. So he says, now you are a Vaishnava and he will not trouble you. Because actually he is also his cousin, brother. They both are son of Kashyap. Garuda is son of Vinata, Kashyap's wife. Kaliya is son of Kadru, is also Kashyap's wife. So they are brothers. So he says, now you don't have to fear him. He will be friendly with you because he will see my footmarks on your head. So nachate garudat bhayam bhavi tiyah dvipam. So he says, there will be no more fear for you from Garuda. Therefore you can go there and he explained that you came from here. You took shelter of Radhametam Upashrita. You gave up Ramanak Dweep and came here because of his fear, Garuda's fear. So now that will not happen to you. So you can be fearless. So therefore, also the meaning is that if you take shelter of Krishna's feet, then you become free from fear. No more fear. 
So Sri Rishi Ruvacha, so Sri Sukhdev said, Mukto Bhagavata Rajan Krishna Nadbhut Karmana Tampujaya Masa Muda Nagpat Nesha Sadharam. So the Naga, the snake, he was released now by Krishna Bhagavan who does wonderful deeds, Adbhut Karmana. So Adbhut Karmana Bhagavata Mukta. So a king. So Tam Pujya Masa Muda Nagpatanesha Sadhana. Now they worshipped him. So all this time they only recited prayers to him. Now they will do some puja. Actual puja with articles. So Adbhut Karmana Iti Kaliyad Vrajastha Jivasya Tranam Kaliyasya Api Garuda Tranam Iti Hinsya Hinsakyor Ubhiyor Api Kalyanam Iti Adbhutam Karma. So what is the wonderful deed which Krishna did? So he says that Kaliya was a terror for the Vrajvasis. And Garuda was terror for Kaliya. Garuda terrified Kaliya, that's why he ran away from there. And now when Kaliya came here, the Vrajvasis were in fear of him. So he released Vrajvasis from the fear of Kaliya and also he released Kaliya from the fear of Garuda. So for Kaliya, Garuda is the Hinsaka, is the killer. And Garuda is the killed of his food. And for Vrajvasis, Kaliya was the deadly snake. So he released both of them, did welfare to both, in fact for all three, for Vrajvasis, for Kaliya and also for Garuda. So Krishna Naiti Swabhakta Garuda Aparadhasya Sapriya Vrajastha Jiva Aparadhasya Cha Cha Karshnam Param Bhakta Kaliya Patni Priti Anurodhat Kritam Iti Bhava. So the word Krishna is used here in Krishna in Adhut Karmana. So Krishna means one who pulls Krishna Dhatu Vilekne Akarshana. So he says Krishna in Aiti Swabhakta Garuda Apradhasya and Swapriya Vrajastha Jeeva Pradhasya. So he says that he pulled the aparad which Garuda was doing and also the aparad which was being done to the Vrajvasis who are dear to him. So Chacha Karshanam Param Bhakta Kaliya Patni Priti Anurodhat. So he did this on the request of the wives of Kaliya. We are over supreme devotees. This is the sense. So this Garuda Pradha says Aparad towards Garuda. Because Garuda was also cursed by Sabri Muni not to come there. So now there was no more need for him not to come. I think that's what he means by Garuda Parana. So now this next three verses that describe the worship they did. So Divyambar Shragmani Bhi Parardhai Rapi Bhushnai Hi Divya Gandhanu Lepaischa Mahatyo Utpala Malaya Pujitva Jagannatham Prasadya Garudadhvajam Tatah Pritopya Nugyata 
परिक्रम भी वंदितम सकल सकलत्र सुहित पुत्रो दीपम अवधेर जगाम तदेव सामृत जला यमुना निर्विषा भवत अनुग्रहाद भगवत क्रीड़ा मानुष रूपिण सो दे ऑफर्ड वेरियस आर्टिकल्स टू हिम सो दिव्य अंबर दे गेव हिम डिवाइन क्लॉथ्स टू वेयर नाइस पटका लाइक हियर इन इंडिया वन यू रिसीव सम ऑनरेबल गेस्ट टू गिव देम सम नाइस पीस ऑफ क्लॉथ सदे कृष्णा संगाड द येलो चादर दिव्य अंबर एंड स्रक गार्लैंड मणि वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ जेम्स परार्धैरपी भूषणय सो मैनी मैनी परार्घै मीन्स वेरी एक्सपेन्सिव ऑर्नामेंट्स देन दिव्य गंधानुलेप से ऑल्सो डिवाइन परफ्यूम्स एंड पेस्ट्स ऑन इज बॉडी बिकॉज ही वॉज बिटन बाई स्नेक सो नाउ यू कैन put some kind of ointment <laughs> in all those places where he has bitten so on a lepo to heal it and mahatya utpala malaya and huge garland of lotus flowers so from where all this came did they have storehouse or what <laughs> in the lake where were this inside they had store room right they are keeping all this so this you have to know that this snake all these asuras the way they are described that is one way but they are also living beings human beings they also have hands and legs they also live so pujitva jagannatham prasadya garuda dhvajam tata prito bhanugyata परिक्रम में अभिवंदतम सही वर्शिप्ड कृष्णा हुई जगन्नाथ द मास्टर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स ही प्लीज हिम इज कॉल्ड गरुड़ ध्वज कृष्णा चैरियट हैज द मार्क ऑफ गरुड़ा ऑन इट ही ऑल्सो राइड्स ऑन गरुड़ा सो ततः प्रीतो अभ्यनुज्ञात है मैन वन कृष्ण वॉज प्लीज then he gave them the permission <coughs> to live and then they did parikrama to him so parikram me and abhivande paid again obeisances to him so along with his wife kalatra sruit <coughs> family members children dvipam of their jagam so then he went to the island in the ocean सो अनुग्रहा भगवत क्रीडा मानस रूपेण एंड दिस इज ऑल बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ कृष्ण भगवान हु वॉज डूइंग हिज प्ले इन द फॉर्म ऑफ ह्यूमन ह्यूमन फॉर्म सो ही वेंट थ्रू द यमुना रिवर सो इट इज डिस्क्राइब दैट ही एंटर्ड इन टू यमुना then yamuna meets ganga at prayag and from there it goes to the ocean so he went by the water path now is how will he go to the ocean so he had nice ride in prayag there is actually a place called ahiyapur to said that kaliya stayed there for some time on the way to rest many more on that's the the place where yamuna ends and ganga namo yamuna so this is the end of this chapter it is shrimad bhagavate mahapurane brahma sutra bhasya paramhansyam samhitayam vayasikyam dasam skande kaliya niryarpanam nam sodh sandhya 16th chapter and 
सो साधरमिति पूर्व श्लोक तेर हे प्रभो साधरम मेरे साधरम 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 इज इन द लास्ट श्लोक Hmm? Yeah, he's bringing it in this commentary. So, Sadaram iti purva sloka te. So, he says Sadaram from the previous sloka. He said, He Prabho. So, this is the sense. Dushtatayaha param avadhi rupe. Mai kripayaha param avadhi rarpitam tvaya. So, he says that, O oh Lord, I am the ultimate limit of wickedness and you are the ultimate limit of kripa, compassion on me. So these are two extreme, highest grace on the top most wicked person. That's what the highest saying. mercy to the most fallen. So param avdhir arpitam tvaya yadaho says this is <coughs> such a wonder. He says, Prakrita, Prakrita Lokeshu, Madanya, Kopi, Dhvaja, Vajra, Ankushadi, Chinhani, Samurdhanir, Nadhatte. He says, either in the material world or in the spiritual world, there is no other person who carries the marks of your footprint on his head. There is no one. So this is your grace on me, exceptional. Because there is nobody who got such an opportunity. So he says, this is what the word sadharam means in the sloka 64. He says, there is no one like that. Tadaham sampratam sri mad angani mad danta dansotha Vishadaha taptani sugandha sushi tala chandan rasena sastri kaiva pani bhe sprishan anulimpan. So therefore now I am going to smear or put this very fragrant and very cooling paste of sandalwood on your body which are burning because of my poison my bites, poisonous bites. So, with the help of my wives, I am going to put it with my own hands on your body so that you can feel relief. So, this is another opportunity he is getting. Sringari Anicha, and I am also going to put ornaments on your body. Kshanamatraiva Divyasne Upavishatu. So please sit down here on this beautiful throne for a short time so that I can put all this paste on your body, decorate you with ornaments, give you garland. So iti upaveshya svavanchitam puriyatva labda bhagavat prasadas tato nirjagami tiyaha. So in this way when Krishna sat down, and Kaliya worshipped him and fulfilled his wish. And then he took permission from him and left from there after getting the grace of Bhagavan. So this is what is described here in these three slokas. Sardha Dvayana, two and a half. Mani Bhiriti. So he says, what is this money? or gem. So he says, Mani Bhir Itaha Krishna Pradur Bhava Kale Tada Vaksha Sthala Eva Asit Ye Kaustubha Saeva Tasya Narlilatva Shobha Vyaghata Bhava Artham Tadeva Alakshitam Kaliya Koshagar Madhya Pravishta Bhut so when Krishna was born to Devaki in Mathura, at that time he had Kostub gem on his chest. 
but then he was brought to Braj by Vasudev and given to Yashoda. So there he became a Narashishu, like a small baby. He already became a small baby. Prakritam, Shishu Prakritam Yatha. So at that time, if he still has the Kostuba gem on his chest, then people will think, what is this? This small baby having this gem. Mm-hmm. So this would have been an obstruction to his human Leela, his Nar Leela, his human like pastime. So therefore this gem disappeared from his body at that time and went into the treasury of Kaliya snake. Now he is giving it back to him. So now onwards he will have Kostuma. Because now everybody knows that he got it from him. So it is not going to be taken as Tizek, some problem in his human pastime. So that is what he describes. Ateva Bahuratna Alankara Pradana Samaye Kaliya Patni Bhira Parichitaeva Suya Ratna Vishes and Jnani in a Kostuba Dutt. But when this Kostuba gem came into the treasury of Kaliya, they did not know this. Because there are so many other gems, so one more came there. And the wives of Kaliya, they also did not know that this is Kostuba gem. So when they gave various types of ornaments to Krishna, then they gave this one also without knowing that this is his eternal Kostuba gem. So that's what you say that Sviya Ratna Vishesh Jnana Kostuba Dutta Yaduktam. As it is said, Kostubhakyo Maniriyena Pravishya Hradam Auragam Kaliya Prayashi Vrinda Hastaira Atma Upaha Upharita. Iti Ganoddesa Deepkayam. So Krishna Ganoddesa Deepika says that the gem which is called Kostuba, this entered into the lake of Kaliya or Gamhrada, Kaliya lake. And this was given by the wives of Kaliya, Kailasiya Prayasi Vrinda Hastaira Atma Bharit. It was offered to Krishna by the hands of the wives of Kaliya. Prasadyaiti Bhagavanapi Kaliya Murdha Swa Bhaya Hasta Tala Nidhanina. So Kaliya, when it is said that Krishna was pleased or Kaliya pleased him, it means that Krishna was happy now and he put his lotus hand on the head of Kaliya. Tadiya Sarvanga Vyatham Upshamaya Masaiti Bhava. And by putting his lotus hand on his head, he removed all the pain from the body of Kali. So Kali also became normal. No more pain in his body. Garuda Dvajam Prasadyaiti Bho Garud Vahana Prabho Sampratiham Garudasya jest bhatri bhatur daso abhuvamiti. So here in the sloka it is said that Garuda dhajam prasadya, after pleasing Krishna, whose carrier is Garuda, it indicates that as if he is saying that, O Lord, whose carrier is Garuda, now onwards, Garuda, who is my elder brother, I become his servant. I have become the servant of Garuda from now onwards. Ataha Katachit Kadachit Dur Deshasya Gantavyatve Sati Ahamapi Swavahanatve Nasmartavyo Nimesha Matra Neva Satkoti Yojan Gami Dasanu Dasati Taduktir Gamnati. Therefore, if sometimes you need to travel somewhere, you can also remember me. I can also travel hundred yojanas just like that. It's like Garuda can go at a very high speed. So he says, I can also do that. 
so since i am servant i am also brother of garuda so i have also that ability to travel so you need a ride i can also be. you already have taken ride on me so you already have the experience so i can give you also may i add something that uh, in one place i think vishnu chakravarti taku describes in another kalpa um kaliya became the chariot of krishna like that absolutely so atah kaliya arudha eva kams nirdishta krishna mathram jagam iti pauraniki katha kvachit shruyate so he says that in some puranas it is described maybe this is what you are referring to that when krishna went to mathura then he went there riding on kaliya means kaliya was his chariot so kaliya arudh hai ve kam se nirdishta hai krishna mathuram jagam so that's why he went so it must be in some other purana krida manus rupana iti nityoga iti so krida krida manus rupana so this is his eternal past time nini pratya nitya yoga means it is not temporary body but is eternal form iti sarartha darshanyam arshanyam bhakt chet sam dashame shoda sodhya sangata sangata satam so this brings an end to the 16th chapter of 10th canto commentary by vishnu chakravarti called sarartha darshani written by the grace of devotees which is pleasing to the devotees so any question on this Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, yeah, yesterday <clears throat> in some point in the class, uh, this question arose related to, to the, the, when some actions are doing with the consciousness of I, and when the actions are doing without that consciousness of I, but uh, understanding that, also god will uh, is managing the, the universe so so i have uh, just to clarify because in some point i just get lost and i w- would like to understand this when someone do actions that are missing but one that maybe because of when when someone do actions that are pleasing for Bhagavan, maybe by his own will or because he understands that he, uh, his will is commanding everything, these actions will not go <clears throat> or will not harm uh, uh, the devotion of anyone or himself. But when someone acts uh, in a way by his own will and create uh, an offense or can mean that harm the bhakti of himself of or all the people around this something like that that I'm not sure if I get it no well, that action is against the bhakti then it will harm but if it is just an action is not related to bhakti then it's not again it's not going to harm bhakti it's not going to help in bhakti also yes because the, the question uh, uh, arises related to for example some some papa or some some sin or some crime uh, the difference between between crime and offense and how someone can just uh feel that okay i will do this action but god controls so maybe i kill or i do this or i do that and this is in god's control 
and they, I will not have to face any type of reaction for that just because my consciousness was thinking like that. But this is just uh, like a cheating our own self because if someone wants to act according to listening Bhagavan, why this person have to do such type of action? Yeah, so you yourself are saying it. What, what, what is the question? If it is right, because I, 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 How? I feel confused. How is it right? Well, that if someone acts according to Bhagavan's will... Yeah, but is he really <laughs> acting or he is acting by his own will and then putting it on God? Exactly. So therefore that has to be seen. I mean, you are trying to cheat Krishna or what? You are muted. That's what I mean. That I already hear many people that try to support their actions, putting this in idea of Bhagavan's will and they don't take uh, responsibility for these things. Yeah, so they'll get the result of it in the same way and Krishna will say, yes, I'm, I'm giving you the punishment, it is my will, so don't complain now, <laughs> since everything is done by me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and I have another question related to, uh, another question related to the topic. So, I can understand that Bhagavan is his own is the cause of the action that also displeased him, which was the, the the question of Maharaj yesterday, that why he will do, he will the cause of actions that displease him also. But the way that I understand this is that if you are the owner of something, you take the responsibility of everything what happened. So in the moment that he, when he gives us free will or free choice, uh, he is taking also the the responsibility of the actions that are out of his will, which means he is also the cause of that because he is giving this um, this this free choice or free will, so to say. But uh, at the same time, I mean, he is uh, he is taking this responsibility in that way. I don't know if I understand well. If you, when you have free will, you also have responsibility. It's not that you have free will and now you can do anything. So when you have some facility, that also comes responsibility. So if you misuse it, you get one reaction. If you use it, you get another reaction. You can say it is God controlling God doing this, but if He has given you to make choice, then you become responsible for that. Papaji. Yes. Um, Bali Maharaj got also uh, Bali Maharaj got also the foot on his head, but by Lord Vamana. Is there a difference in, in the quality? Krishna's foot and Vamana's foot? Well Krishna Vamana did not dance on his head. <laughs> and Vamana and Bali Maharaj had hair on his head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so how he is going to get the footmark? Snake okay. did not have that. It was clean head. There is an advantage of shaving your head. <laughs> uh, is fasting required? to take uh, auspicious bath at Kaliya because as per the sloka 62 he is yes. telling Upasya Mam. And this is when you have to do tarpan, you have to fast, hmm. do the tarpan then you eat after that. It's okay. not that you eat and then you do the tarpan. Any puja you do in the morning, first you do puja then you eat, right? Yeah. Not that you first have your breakfast then you say, okay now I will do puja. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's what it means. Mm-hmm.
give the mic there. Oh, you have it? Okay. Could you repeat how this ghost uh, came to Kaliya? Wasn't it just by some divine arrangement that it's kind of... Yeah, because Kostuba is also a person. Mm-hmm. So when Krishna became a baby, now Kostuba is not going to remain there because he's just in Prakrita Shishriya. You remember? He read it. So then he disappeared. It's like when he was born, he was born with earrings and helmet and conch. And so where did they go suddenly? Yeah. When he became a baby, then all those ornaments and weapons, they disappeared. Right? Disappeared means they became unmanifest. So Kostova then said, I'm going to Yamuna. Relax. Before you go to Vrindavan, I will reach there. So now he comes back. May I ask a question? <clears throat> I have also doubt regarding this uh, cost of money. Uh, because uh, ornaments depends on the personality, means different type of personality they have different ornaments. So now the, even the uh, Kaliya returning to them, Krishna, he is not going to use. Hmm? He is not going to use this ornament. He means? Means Krishna not going to wear this uh, cost of money. Why? Because he is doing Narlila. So Narlila don't wear ornaments? Human beings don't uh, put ornaments? No? Yeah. So? So, but before also he was not using. Because that time he was baby. If he is born as a baby with the ornament, people will say from where this ornament came. No, before the past time of Kaliya, he was not the baby. So it has to be brought, so this is a past time for this way to bring it to him. Human beings put on necklace, earrings, finger rings, all this. Uh, another doubt is that the uh, when another demon came, they attack directly Krishna, most of them. Mm. But uh, they liberated. But in the case of Kalya, uh, Kalya didn't. Uh, Attack directly to the Krishna. He attacked also. When no, Krishna later, went first to the lake, he attacked him. First, Krishna went to their area. Not their area. It's not that he owns it. Krishna was also <laughs> when he's tending his cows, he's in his own field. Agasura came there. That was also Krishna's area, but it was Agasura's area. It is Agasura who came. Mm. So Kaliya, what is that? Kaliya owns that lake or what? Don't owns it? No. So, so still they are not liberated. Means why? Yeah. So what's your question? My question is that in other uh, past time with the uh, demons, they liberated. But yeah, in because this he killed them. And here he is not killing because the wives spread. Other demons did not come with their wives, otherwise they would have been spared too. <laughs> so that's the advantage of having a wife. <laughs> but he No wife, no life. <laughs> but anyway he is going to suffer more. Why he is going to suffer? He is a devotee, he is going to live with, with his Vaishnava wives and do puja and everything. Why you think he is going to suffer? No, living in the uh, body of snake and the so ponds. The body, now he has got footprints of Krishna and touch of Krishna's hand. Yeah, still they are not going to live in palace. Why snake has to live in a palace? <laughs> <laughs> snake is happy in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if there is chance that they can... Krishna li- himself doesn't live in a palace. 
is wandering in the forest. Okay. Babaji, could I ask just one more short question? Yeah. So, there must be many different Kalyas, because they are all different demons who take that role, and in different Kalpas, hmm. they all get, uh, get this mercy. So, when it says that in a different part he uses Kalya, to whom does it refer? But it, does it change I mean, all the Kalyas who... When he says what? When he says that uh, in a different kalpa he uses kalya as his career. Yeah. So he chooses he chooses any of these of the Yeah, but this all these kalyas are not there. Then they die. The kalya uh-huh. is going to live eternally or not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. You will also die. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, and then when they die, then they get some a special body problem because yeah. they already. Yeah, they got uh-huh. devotee form. Okay. Ah, thank you. Um, upasha mam smaranatya sarva papiya pramuchade. When he is telling this, so how could that be possible nowadays? People are going to commit thousand amounts of sins, and after taking one dip down at Kaliya, their sins are going to be removed. Is that possible even today? It's only for today, because before, as you said, they were not doing so many things. <laughs> so there was no need to remove. Yeah, it is possible today also. But, but uh, if that is going to be happen, so what is the uh, yeah, that requirement? Will first of all, if you read it and you understand the book, it mm-hmm. is not just for removing the sin. He says you remember this past time. Remembering also means understanding, following, which means you become devotee. Okay. It is not just for removing the sins. I already said that these are called falsruti. Rochana artha falsruti. So this is like advertisement. So to increase your interest, so that you will read it, if you read it, then your heart will change, you become devotee. What he's saying is not false, but it's not that, okay, I want to go and call this thing and I will get rid of my sin. Okay. So this is not the only statement. There are also other statements that if you misuse, then that becomes offense. Okay. Sin will be removed, then you will also get it back. There are also statements like right? They say that you go and take bath in Ganga River. Then your sins are removed, but they're removed and they sit on the tree. When you come out and you put in your dress, they jump back on you. (laughs) (laughs) So you have to change your heart. Just like they do confession in Christianity. So if you actually confess from your heart, okay, your sin is gone. But then you should not do it after that. So if you believe in it and you do it, and don't do that sin, then it's fine. But not that, okay, I go there, I remove my sin, then I come back. So that it becomes a nama prad. Right? Na suddhyate yamai. Na vidyate yamai hitasya suddhi. So that is called nama prad. That becomes even more dangerous. Because now nama prad cannot be removed by any bath or this or that. You have to suffer. <laughs>